to John. I thought it was the
Welcome, it is a joy to see all of you here on this wonderful Sunday morning of Pentecost. Yay! It is the birthday of the church. It's the birthday of this particular church as well. And we celebrate today all who are here in person, all who are online, no matter how God made you. Uh, of, of every nationality, every social location, every orientation, any place that you could be coming from, we celebrate that you are here now. And we celebrate that all are affirmed and held up as God's children this day. So uh, glad that you are here. I want you to, to um, well, to know that I guess a big announcement is that after church, we're going to be celebrating this birthday time together. So uh, come and celebrate a meal with us after church. Uh, if you would like, we can pull out some tables tables outside and, and if you prefer to eat there, uh, if you're concerned about that. But we want, we want to celebrate together in this time of, of, of a birthday celebration, back to our birthday meals, uh, since we're celebrating the, the birthday of the whole church. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation this morning? Well, then let us rise for the call to worship, County of Oakland. When the world divides us, come, come the Holy Spirit, Spirit make us one. When the world calls us orphan, come, come the Holy Spirit, make us family. When the world leads us astray, come, the Holy Spirit, call us one. Come, the Holy Spirit, come. Let us remain standing and join and singing him 539, O Spirit of the Living God, chapters 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I, I do want to let you know, uh, 
uh, an update on Sarah Brotherton. Her cancer has moved to stage four. It's not good, um, but she's still fighting. So just please keep her, keep her in prayer today um, and this time moving forward. I want to also remember, so we will keep Buffalo and uh, the town in Texas, um, the school shooting, but also we had Tucson this week as well from the shooting that was there in the hospital. So um, for all of these mass shootings and for all the folks that are survivors of previous mass shootings, um, the fact that we've had so many, but for everybody who's had trauma with this string of, of shootings as well. Um, so to hold up them, hold up our country, that we can find solutions and um, come together. So for, yeah, prayers for our country as well. Are there other uh, uh, cel concerns or celebrations for us this morning? Yes, Paul. Arms is friend that works with us um, that had surgery uh, recently and lost quite a bit of blood. And she's she's recovering. She's in air now, and she's going to be out of work for about two weeks. And she's a health care worker, so anytime that happens, they can come out to the water to help her, her recover. Her name's Heather Stone. Hold up, Heather. Hold up, Heather. Yes, we uh, sadly spoke pretty to ponder to this group Thursday, right? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, Frida's service is Thursday. Um, and pray for her family. Um, they, they, they were doing well uh, when I saw them last. And, um, you know, she's been sick for a long time, so there is definitely a celebration for her passing spoke of how she is running now, and it's been so many years that she can barely walk. So, um, yeah, she, she, it, it, is, it is a celebration, and, but also a sorrow for all those who loved her. She's just an embodiment of sweetness and just love and gentleness in the world. So we do hold up all, all Frida's family. We rejoice for her, because it's been a long journey of, of challenge. We lost a. It's okay. It's okay. We lost a very good friend. A Friday night, forty-one years old, to a heart attack. His brother found him yesterday morning. And he leaves behind a young wife and a 20-month-old. What was his name? Nathan Boswell. We hold up all those who are mourning Nathan, his, his young wife and child, and all of his friends that um, care for him so. like to celebrate the new life, the new life in the hallway, and the new life above our sanctuary. Uh, Riley's brother-in-law, and they were, uh, and Joel, and, and uh, Carol, his, his brother happened to be at the right time, the right place to make this all happen. Let there be light. Yeah, let there be light. <laughs> and there was light, so we celebrate that. Thank you so much for that word. We're all a bit brighter today. Um, my brother-in-law died a few years ago, <coughs> but my daughter, Annie, God willing, will deliver my third grandchild on Thursday. And there's one other thing, I, I don't know if this will be embarrassing, but I want to thank someone that has been through all these things and been to the hospital with me. And he always brings a, a thick book thinking he'll get a lot of reading done. I bring a thick book thinking I'll get a lot of reading done. And 
we end up talking about everything, uh, and then we get into Gnosticism and everything. And, and without him, I don't know how I would have made it through the last few years. And the name begins with W and ends with a Y. And I thank you very much publicly. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, part of this wonderful mix we have. And in many ways. Any other prayer concerns or celebrations to pull us? Pray for Ukraine. Yes. Okay, we pray for Ukraine here. It's just terrible that that is still having to be on our list. But yeah, we continue to pray for that situation. For peace in a way that we can't see. Paul? Pray for Paul and his whole family just to be basically in trouble with the Lord. Yes, the country Georgia, not the state Georgia. Yeah, no, pro say travels to Georgia, the state it wouldn't be as good a deal, but <laughs> to the country, yeah. To, there's a lot of good ministry that Paula has done for years with uh, Teresa in, in Georgia. Ask her about it. She'll, she'll show great stories. Yes, Shasta. Uh, let us remember Miss Barbara. Uh, Barbara Petty, if she is not feeling the best. We hold that bar graph and she will feel better soon. And let us come now to a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all the ways that your spirit is alive and in our world today. All the ways that that your love is present, and we give you thanks for all the people in our lives that have made your love real and tangible for us in our life. Lord, especially we hold up to you um, uh, the, the thanksgiving for, for schools out and the thanksgiving for uh, the presence of all who are here, we give you thanks for the ways that that your that your grace was, is is in the celebrations of today here and around the world as the church celebrates its birth. Lord, we also hold up to you for your care, for your healing, for for your grace, Paula. Hold up to Chip's family in the morning. And hold up Andy for the delivery on Thursday. And hold up Heather. And hold up all those who are mourning um, with him. And we move on, they need to move through this time. All those who, who love freedom. And help Barbara. And Sarah, Bob, Enrique, Jeff, Jim, Simon, Philip, Chuck, Luke, Jean, and Ruth, Barbara. We have of those who have survived. Um, and are mourning those who have died in Texas, in Tucson, in Buffalo, for all those re-traumatized from previous um, shootings, for all those who are mourning in our country and just for our country, for healing, for moving forward, to moving forward to a place where these shootings don't happen. We hold up to Ukraine and ask for peace. We ask for your movement in this and that is beyond us so we go to you. That we ask that you bring peace, that you move in the heart of Putin, that you move and bring peace and grace and safety and comfort to those who mourn now and all who are refugees around the world. We ask all these things in your son's name who taught us to pray and say, 
First reading comes to us from Romans chapter 8. Romans is uh, Paul's largest letter that he writes, and truly the most like theologically dense one, where he tries to lay everything out um, for his followers. He has time to write in this way. So we hear now from, from Paul, that is Romans chapter 8. Verses 14 to 17. All who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ. If we really suffer with him, so that we can also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God.
Thank you. And um, I forgot a celebration. So I'm going to go back to celebrations. I forgot to announce that Alex and Sydney are getting married this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Humorous back there going, oh no. <laughs> no, he is he's getting married. <laughs> and we celebrate we celebrate them. We have been working our way through the Easter season, preparing for, for today, for Pentecost, and the birthday of the church, and looking at Acts and the actions that, that have go, that went on in the early church. And so today we back up to the start of when the story happens here in the, the second chapter of Acts. So if you have been in church a long time, you have heard this passage undoubtedly a, a lot. It comes up this, this time every year. Uh, and if I'm the first person to introduce you to it, then I am very, very privileged that you are here and you get to hear it. So let us hear now the story of this birthday of the church, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and this is out of the Common English Bible Translation. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages as, as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look! Aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How can they each of us hear them speaking in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phryg Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, boarding Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them de declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some of them asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other eleven apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your elder will, elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, and I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness. And the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Today is a celebration day. This day of the birthday of the church. Zoe asked me, so how does the church have a birthday? Who, who's the, who are the parents of, of the church? So even the way the kids are good at, at throwing questions at you, and I was like, well, Jesus, no, it can't be Jesus. He's the husband of the church, so that would be weird. So the spirit, the spirit is the parent that gives birth to the church alive in this world. It came down like flames, like tongues of fire alighting on each of the disciples. That's why we have red. That's why we celebrate this with this burning fire that the Spirit had to enlight into this world and make a difference. Each of these disciples, they said, were gathered all in one place. They were waiting. There was joy here because this was a fulfilled promise. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. And he did not. The Spirit came with power. The Spirit was there. The Spirit gave them power to speak out. Spoke out in the languages of those who could hear in their native tongues what God was doing. People heard them, and I guess when you hear a bunch of different languages and if you don't know what that language is, it kind of sounds like someone is babbling. So that must have been why they thought they were drunk. It sounded like they couldn't pronounce things well, so they were all talking in different goblin do sounds, and they didn't know what it was, so they just must be drunk. And Peter said, no, because it's 9 o'clock in the morning. I got one chuckle. I didn't have the early church seat. That's That wine always makes me laugh, too, I've got to say. That's why we're not drunk, because it's morning. <laughs> Come back at 9 o'clock in the evening. But anyway, that's, it, he uses this to let them know. The, the point is, it's not, it's not that you, it's not that it's babbling. It's that you don't know it. It's not your language. They're speaking here to people all around. They're speaking so that folks can, can hear them. It's not babbling. In fact, it is the reversal of the Tower of Babel. If you remember that story from, from uh, Vacation Bible School or, or, or Sunday School, that's the place where the, the languages got separated out and people couldn't communicate with one another and they, could, they couldn't come together and do things and they were separated. And this story is a reversal of that story. Rather than separating people out by language, it's bringing people together with language. Now, if you're someone who knows more than one language, that's, that's fabulous. I, I, I never got to the place where I could call myself bilingual in um, Spanish. But I think it's wonderful what I understood about people who know more than one language. For every language you know, it doesn't give you just a different way to communicate. It gives you a different perspective on the world. The way that word choices come together and the way that it fits, it's, a, it's like a different vantage point onto how things are understood. So this gift of the Spirit is giving all of these different vantage points of being able to understand and connect to these disciples who were gathered so they could bring to people in, in, in the language that was closest to their hearts, in the, the nuances of language, to the, the people that were there. Not that they couldn't have understood them, they spoke the common language, but that they got it directly in the way they would get it best. In, in their mother tongue, the tongue that their mothers spoke to them. It was a bringing together. And the Spirit did not stop with this story. It moves through all these stories we've been hearing from Acts. It moves through directing Paul in the ministry, directing Peter and what it means to have this new movement and, and who is allowed in. It moved through to people who heard it and then received it immediately, were baptized, were brought in, became people who spread this word. It was active and alive. Maybe a little scary for us, as fire can be. But this fire wasn't the kind that destroyed. 
I think this fire harkens back to us to that story of the burning bush where the, the flames did not consume. They weren't burned up, but they were lit on fire to connect, to reach out, to bring <coughs> together. And we celebrate this each year. We celebrate, we pull up the bread, and we make a big deal about it being a birthday. But that's to remember what happened. Sure, yeah, that's part of it. But more than that, this is a celebration of what is still in the world today. The Spirit is still here. Our parent as the church, still present, still moving through. Now, in that time that they were speaking, there were all these people in one place who had a different language and a different understanding. And we live today in a time where whether or not people are speaking different languages, there are a lot of different languages to be spoken in our country, but there are definitely people speaking different understandings and conceptions about the world. We keep getting to a place where I've never seen this country so divided. Well, you know, there was a civil war, so maybe not quite as divided as that, but I swear it looks like it's getting close. It's a, it's a scary time for us. There is so much that, that separates and that moves us apart. It's true in the church. People will fight within the church. Like this church is the good church and this church is not a good church because they are doing the wrong thing. We define ourselves in opposition. And I'm honestly guilty of this too. If somebody asks me what Methodism is, I will start telling them, oh, well, what's different between Methodism and the thing that you know? Because it is a way to understand distinctions, but truly... What connects us as church is way bigger than what separates us. We're following Jesus, crucified and resurrected. We, we are born by the Spirit in the world, changing, active, guiding us. That's huge compared to the theological differences of note that I could tell you that specifically uh, distinguishes Methodism from other Christian denominations. Well, I enjoy those sorts of details. I'm a geek about that kind of stuff. But I recognize it's not nearly as important as what brings us together. And that's true of our country, too. And, and we're so used to just being so angry about what the other people that disagree with us are doing that we want to demonize them and, and throw all that this, this, is, this is bad, this is wrong, this is evil. Both sides passing around these words of degradation to one another, building up resentments when the truth is more connects us than separates us. We can believe differently. That is okay. That is fine. But when we stop seeing the humanity, when we stop seeing the image of God and people that disagree with us, then we're in trouble. And my friends, there's a lot of trouble in our country and honestly in the world. It's not just a phenomenon of our country right now. There's a lot of division going on and challenge and struggle. We need a Pentecost today. We need the Spirit active in us today. In a passage from Romans, Paul tells us that we are children of God. And in being a child of God, an heir, now, an heir does mean that you are part of the inheritance. You get the gifts of God. But an heir also means one who is picking up the mantle and doing the work left behind. So if we, if we are children, heirs of God's work in the world, then my friends, we are called to be doing God's work in the world. Not alone. Not by ourselves. It's 
seems too huge and too great for us to be able to make a difference. But the Spirit is here to give us what we need to make a difference. The Spirit is here to help us know uh, to be able to love people we disagree with. You don't have to agree with them. You don't even have to like them. You just have to love them, not in the feeling lovey-dovey. It, it's, you know, red for Valentine's love. No, in the actions that make a difference kind of love. Caring for, respecting, giving dignity and worth to others. The world needs us right now. And that may sound a little too grandiose for your understanding, but it's true. Our country needs us right now. Our community needs us. God is needing us to be an active part in the gospel right now. We're being called to be empowered by the Spirit. That we might find the words to breach the difference between other people and us. And that we don't have to depend just on ourselves for it. The Spirit working within us. We're being called to breach these differences. We're being called to see the image of God in others and to see them with love, with compassion. We are called to be in the world even if it feels like foolishness upon some who will see us. We are called to speak words of grace and connection, because that is when the church is at its finest. When the church is doing its best in the world, it's when we are coming together. But we had Sarah come forward and, and, and kneel, and people came and laid hands on her this morning, that, that young woman with, with cancer. And, and I have been in so many different churches where people have come forward and laid hands on them, and they needed that connection in that church. It's like an interwoven fabric that comes and supports people who are in the greatest need. Whether they are people within the church or people outside in the community, that is when the church is at its finest. And when the church is at its worst, it's when people have factions and divisions that are working against one another and trying to get their will and pull it around. And you know, there's a, there is a reason I want to stay with y'all and I don't want to go to a larger church. I've, I've, I've been at other churches. I am happy here. I'm not pointing fingers at the division causing here. I, I, I will say that y'all are wonderful people. Uh, I, I love it here, but I do know what, what is the thing that tears churches apart and have seen it. And have experienced it. And it's happening within our denomination right now as churches are splitting off. Not that many in our annual conference, but in others, the pain is great and the division is great. The struggle is, is hard. And I do think we are diminished for the splitting. I think it has to happen. I get that it has to happen, but I do think it's not ideal. It diminishes us. But that is not something we can fix ourselves. What we can do is do everything we have, give everything we have to let the Spirit burn within us. Do everything we can to open ourselves to how the Spirit would guide us to speak. And with all that we have, love those in our world. And if somebody's hard for you to have that compassion and love for, know that is a place you've got to concentrate that work on. To try harder to show that love. To try harder to find words that bring us closer to one another. You are children of God. Heirs, heirs of God, heirs of this tradition of Pentecost in the world. We are needed, we are called, and we are empowered to be that in the world. That is the promise of 
Holy Ghost. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know the places in our hearts, the times where we have resisted your call to love others, where we have found joy in being sanctimonious and thinking ourselves better than others and putting up dividing lines of all sorts between us and, and those other children of yours who are fallen and flailing just as we have had times we have fallen and flailed. Lord, help us see the unity that we have with all of your children. Lord, there is doubt and fear that keeps us from acting. There is the busyness of noise that keeps us from hearing. Calm our fears. Embolden our hearts. And let us hear your word and movement in our life today. Lord, in silence, we lift to you all those ways that we have fallen short of your great calling and those things we have done and the things we have left undone. Lord, we lift to you our fear and our doubt of, of what part we can play in your great world. We lift to you all these things and we open ourselves to hear your voice. Lord, speak to us now. Lord, let us feel the breath within us. And let us trust in the fact that the Spirit is within us. Let us feel the fullness of your grace for any of our shortcomings. And let us feel the fullness of your power within us that we might live in the world as those who live in peace and power. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Spirit of God is alive today. The world is a flame with this power. Know without doubt that the love and power of God is here for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are
page 23 to 24, there are responses for us as we join in the great thanksgiving. We're doing the, the song responses. Let's join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. in a way closer to how we have taken it. We still have individual cups here, but we are, I am sanitizing my hands. We are having one loaf. This loaf is gluten-free, and it is dairy-free, so free from the allergens for, 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 for those who are, get, for, for, I think, if you have a special allergy, you can ask me to make sure. Uh, I, I want to let you know that, uh, that this gift, though, is for us to be together, and this is one loaf. And um, we're going to break it. And each little piece becomes part of us. So us who are many here, we're taking off part of the one. That through Christ's spirit, this gift makes us one. So we who are broken in this gift, we are made whole. There is many cups, but there is one symbolic cup. And this cup, this holds the, the blood of Christ. And blood means life. Because if you lost your blood in the ancient world, you lost your life. This is the offering of Christ's life to live within us. All are welcome to the table. I thought Wally Reed, he's going to help me serve we will serve first the choir and then we will invite you to come forward and kneel as you are able you do not need to kneel if you if you are not able please do not try uh, but come forward if you cannot come forward then we will come to you and that will be wonderful as well but all are invited to come to the table
Holy Spirit is in and through this gift. Let it live within you. Let it burn within you. Now in that peace. this gift be a part of you, live in you, let it breathe and move in you, go in the peace and the power of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery, this way in which you have made yourself present for us. Let this gift live, connecting us to you and to each other and to the world and ministry. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and join in singing the doxology as we celebrate all that has been given. stewardship that they may indeed further your kingdom on this earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing. Let's join in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 544, Let the Murmur of the Doves Song.
that we are all to be carrying out this flame. This represents the light of Christ, the fire of Pentecost. Carry it within your spirit. Go forth and let it show. Let it let the light bring light to a world that's in darkness and needs it so much. Be bearers of this light, light and this light. Go in peace and power. Amen.